Welcome to our show. I'm Mike Fried of North Haven's First Selectman, and it's a great to have you here today on our North Haven Frieda's Forum. Today, our topic is clean energy and clean energy conservation here in North Haven. Many of you may not realize that over the course of the past several years, North Haven has made some tremendous advancements in moving the town forward on achieving clean energy and achieving unprecedented and unparalleled success on energy conservation here in town. I'd like to take a moment now to introduce our guests on today's show. To my far right, Ms. Jo Ms. Georgianne Witt, here a member of our North Haven Clean Energy Task Force. Mr. Kenny Foscue, another member of our Clean Energy Task Force. Mr. Tom Champlin, who is with RGS Energy and a collaborative partner here in town, and we'll hear more about that in a few moments. Courtney Babbage and Kylie Brandt, who are members of the North Haven High School Project Green and have made significant contributions to our town in terms of advancing and helping advance clean energy here in our great town of North Haven. So let me take a few moments to give our North Haven residents an update before we get into our guests here today. Over the course of the past several years, North Haven has now become one of the top five municipalities in the state of Connecticut for the energy conservation, the energy innovation, and the creativity that we have brought forward in our great town. Some of the things that we've accomplished, as an example, over on Universal Drive, about three years ago, we put together and built, through an outside contractor, entering into a power purchase agreement, a solar park on what was once the North Haven landfill, which was closed down approximately 25 years ago. One of our goals was to take an unproductive site, such as that closed landfill, and restore it to a contributing factor here in North Haven. So today, that landfill, those solar panels, power about 40% of the largest energy user in town, the North Haven Water Pollution Control Authority. Later on this summer, we will be increasing that to about eight-tenths of a megawatt. And that is virtual metered into the Water Pollution Control Authority, which we estimate will power about 80% of the largest energy user in the town of North Haven, what we call the WPCA. About two years ago, we entered into a performance contract with Johnson Controls. Johnson Controls is a Fortune 100 company that we collaborated with and they, through their initiatives, helped us take out six million dollars in future capital expenditures for the town. By entering into, into this performance contract, and over the course of 18 years, we will be paying back that improved infrastructure through the difference between what our energy costs once were and the savings that we've achieved as a result of doing things like putting new boilers in the high school, a new boiler in Monoe School, retrofitting all of the town buildings with more energy efficient lighting and heating systems. This was an innovative approach that we've used that many municipalities now are just starting to look at. And North Haven now is a town, and I, as the chief elected official in the town, have been getting more requests from other chief elected officials all over the state in terms of how this program works. So we were a pioneer and a leader in this particular category. We also identified the number two largest energy user in the town, and that's the North Haven Pool. And we entered into a, an agreement with a company called Aegis, which has given us a heat exchange flow system that has dramatically reduced the costs, the energy costs, of our North Haven Pool, which once again is the second largest energy user in town. Through the efforts of a collaboration between the Town of North Haven, the Clean Energy Task Force, the UI, we received grants for performance-based incentives that we achieved in the area of energy efficiency and energy conservation. And I'm very proud of the fact that we collaboratively have built a, a charging station for electric cars in the parking lot on Elm Street where the North Haven pool is. We've worked with outside developers 
at the Target Shopping Center. And we've added five different energy charging stations there that are part of an economic development project for people who have electric cars to use. We have so much that's happening here in North Haven. On top of all that, we, over the course of the past six years, have gone out on world auction markets and have negotiated cents per kilowatt for the balance of our power. And over the course of a three-year period, the last three years, we've saved $1,145,000 in energy costs by working with our director of finance, myself, an outside energy consultant firm who did not charge the town anything for their services. And what we have done is achieve those savings by locking in to a low rate per kilowatt for the power that we use, the energy costs here in North Haven. So that is just the beginning of the story. I'd like to introduce once again George Ann Witt and Kenny Foscu, who were very valuable members of our North Haven Clean Energy Task Force to take you through some of our goals and initiatives and some of the projects that we're working on. George Ann and Kenny. Thanks, Mike. Thank um, you. Just uh, a little background. Our uh, task force was formed back in 2007, so we have 10 solid years of progress, as Mike has said. And that was when the town signed on to agree to use 20% of their power to the buildings to be uh, renewable. So just real quick, our, our main goals are, number one, that is to help the town, residents, and businesses save money. This is a lot of what this is about. Energy efficiency, clean energy is about saving money. And Mike did a great job of talking about some of these projects. Second, we, de we definitely want to address and help people with us address the growing issue of climate change. It's a real thing. We've seen a, a rough winter. Um, and when we, go, when we do these projects, we're contributing to that. We're lowering the amount of uh, carbon dioxide and, and emissions. And then third, and some of us have gotten really interested in the whole idea that we're also improving the economy, that we're building jobs, we're off, offering a chance for people to, to, to go into business like my friend here, Tom. Uh, I think I read recently there's some 34,000 people who are now working in energy efficiency, um, home assessments that we'll, I'll mention in a second, and about 1,900 in solar installation and some 80 companies. So this is a growing field and we think it's a great thing for the economy of the state. Um, so just a couple, I want to mention a couple of projects that we've worked on over the years that people may know about. And I did want to stop here and do two things. First, I want to thank Mike for his leadership. And all these things he's saying, he's not like stretching it at all. We, ha we have been recognized by two, uh, two different awards. Um, and the other is to thank the people of North Haven for being involved with this and having their houses uh, made more in uh, energy efficient and participate in the Solarize campaign, which Tom will be talking about. So um, over the years, we've done a lot of work and we earned points to be able to um, get uh, three different uh, Bright Ideas grants and we were able to offer 300 households a free energy assessment. Before that, we, we ran a, a HES campaign and actually raised some money that we were able to give to Sarah, as you remember. Yes. Um, and you mentioned a couple of things. And the other thing I want to mention um, is last June, um, our North Haven Clean Energy Task Force won a pretty coveted uh, award, Green Circle Award, from the uh, Department of Energy and Environmental Protection. So I just want to stop here and let my buddy here talk about uh, Thank you. And I'm, I'm a much newer member of the task force than uh, Kenny, and it has been a total uh, delight to work with uh, First Selectman Frieda. He is always enthusiastic and comes to us with ideas and is very eager to talk about the ideas for projects we have, and it really makes it a lot easier and a lot of fun. Um, you want and to mention the quarterly meetings? That's really important. Yes, we have quarterly meetings of the task force with the uh, first selectmen 
where we talk about what we've achieved, what our goals are, what his goals are, and it's always very collaborative, uh, very interesting, and I've learned a lot over the years. Um, I know we're going to be moving to Tom soon, but we're in our second Solarize campaign in, I believe, three years, is that correct? Correct. Um, that is a special time in North Haven because it gives people a chance to be evaluated for residential solar systems and then special financing and pricing. And this is open to all the town residents. A lot of people have signed up already. Uh, to date, we have about 350 homes, I believe, that have solar, solar panels. Not very many people are aware of that. Um, and we're right in the middle of it now, so um, I don't know if Tom wants to talk about that or Mike wants to talk about it. Before we get to Tom, I want to just tease something else up, because uh, George Ann and Kenny touched on some very important initiatives that we've been working on. And the home energy audit is a good example. We started this years ago through the efforts of the Clean Energy Task Force and we were receiving monies in return for helping our residents go through a very extensive home energy audit process. At that time it was $99 in audit, but through the advancements that we've made collectively here in town, that we ended up having free energy audits, mm -hmm. up to 300 free energy audits for residents across North Haven. And the feedback we've gotten, Kenny and George, and as you know, it's been outstanding. And many of us have had those home energy solution audits done, and it's really a remarkable process uh, to witness. Now, through the Clean Energy Task Force, they came to me several months back, perhaps maybe, maybe as long as a year ago, and they came with an outstanding recommendation. And the recommendation was, what can we do to help introduce solar to our town residents. And we ended up using the aggregate purchasing power of the town to leverage the best possible price for our residents to engage in discussions with outside contractors to see if solar was the right fit for our residents. And as George Ann has just mentioned, quite a few of our homes have signed up with that. So, George Ann and Kenny, I give the Clean Energy Task Force, all the members, and both of you in particular, all the credit for coming up with that solution, introducing us to Kate, and moving forward with this process. And as mentioned, we have Tom Champlin here now, who's with RGS Energy. And Tom, your thoughts on this type of program and what you've seen so far. Thanks, Mike, and thanks. Kenny and George Ann. It's um, been great working with everybody here in the town. Uh, as you mentioned, it's the second uh, round of Solarize for the town. Uh, and this is actually the 42nd community we've worked with with this type of uh, community program. Uh, just as a brief history of the Solarize program uh, in Connecticut, uh, they're now on the, the, the ninth round, actually just finishing the ninth round. That is a, a program that's uh, backed in part by the Connecticut Green Bank and funded through uh, some of the efficiency programs there. And it's also uh, administered by uh, a nonprofit called Smart Power, and that's uh, Kate that Mike had mentioned, uh, that helps with the, the marketing and outreach uh, to the community. A lot, a lot of the outreach uh, comes in the form of a, a series of workshops as well as uh, tabling events. You'll see us at the Earth Day Festival on uh, April 7th and we just had a few workshops at the libraries and the, and the schools in town. But the premise behind Solarize is to offer uh, discounted pricing to the community uh, with the premise that probably 30 to 40 homes will be moving forward under the timelines of the program, uh, allowing us as an a installer to, to purchase in bulk and pass that savings back onto the community. And so far we've had a great response. We've had uh, 98 uh, interested families uh, sign up to, to get site evaluations. Uh, as of uh, this morning, so far 20 have uh, decided to move forward with the solar. Uh, we're hoping by the end of the program we'll be up at uh, 35, which would be approximately a 10% increase in the number of uh, homes here in North Haven that uh, have gone solar. Uh, so that's our, our goal and probably should be a good opportunity to announce that our, our program is actually being extended 
from the original deadline of April 5th through the end of the month, so it would be April 30th, uh, is a chance to, to sign up with the program. Mm -hmm. And hopefully that will help make up for the rough winter we had and, and you know, getting out for some of these site evaluations. And we're, we're glad that uh, spring has sprung here finally. So. Mm -hmm. Tom, can you share with our audience, if someone's interested, uh, it may, they may have seen solar panels on homes in town, would you explain to our viewing audience what the process would be if there's some interest? And we're going to be having a, more of a campaign coming up, but maybe perhaps for the sake of this show today, as a prelude, can you explain how it would work? Sure, it'd be great. Uh, so, so the best way to actually uh, sign up for a, uh, a site evaluation is through the SolarEyes uh, website, which is solarize.com slash North Haven. And so the town has its own uh, landing page there. You, there you can uh, keep up to date on the upcoming events, uh, but also sign up to have uh, an evaluation at your home. And when you do that, we uh, either come out to your home or we can offer a, an online uh, webinar to, to give an overview of how the program works, uh, what incentives are available, and what potential your, your home has uh, for generating your own clean power. And we like to take a, a holistic approach. So we, uh, we want to learn about your energy consumption you know, historically at the home. Uh, but also uh, starting with uh, energy uh, assessments or, or the um, energy audits that we j were just mentioned, it's a good way to uh, start reducing the amount of electricity that you use in your home. And so that gives you a baseline and maybe some ideas on improving efficiency, tightening the building envelope, maybe upgrading uh, some technologies uh, so that you're uh, reducing some of the power that you're, you're needing in your home. And that allows us to right size the system for your needs because uh, the last thing we want to see you do is over invest in producing your own power. We want to um, help you save first and then help you save more by going solar. Okay, very good. That's great, Tom. And we appreciate really working with you on this. And uh, you've done a great job, and we've got more to come, right? Yeah, we still have about uh, another month or so left in the, in the program. Yes. And, uh, out of the uh, 98 uh, folks that have, have signed up, uh, I think we're still looking to meet with uh, about a third of them. So mm -hmm. uh, it's going to be a busy month uh, coming up here in the nice weather. And we're hoping uh, even more uh, sign up and um, we can get to our goals of about 10% of uh, additional solar here in North Haven. All right. So Courtney and Kylie, as part of the collaboration between the town and the Clean Energy Task Force, you being part of Anthony Giordano's program. He's been involved for a long time here in North Haven. Can you share with us some of the things that you've worked on to collaborate with the town of North Haven and what your interests are and how you first started with this process? Courtney? Certainly. So one of our main goals um, as a club, an environmental club at the high school, is just to uh, interact with people in the community and also in the high school and to sort of teach them and inform them about feasible goals that they can set for themselves and also um, to get them to understand like small changes that they can make in their lifestyle uh, to improve the environment. Um, and we sort of make it very friendly and we put it in a positive light um, to get them to understand the benefits that can come from it. Yeah, so um, a few projects that we've worked on in the past. So I think two years ago we teamed up with Clean Ener Energy Task Force and um, we hopped on Google Maps and looked at houses that would mm -hmm. seem uh, solar panels would be beneficial to them to make sure there wasn't any trees in the way or anything like that. And then uh, Clean Energy Task Force sent out the flyers letting them know that their house would be good houses for uh, solar panels. And then last year we uh, used a lot of our fundraising money. We got recycling bins out onto the uh, athletic fields across our campus, which was an awesome thing to have because as an athlete I know I use my water bottles and it'd be nice to have a place to recycle them. Um, and then this year in the fall we worked on our anti-idling campaign where we um, went around to the elementary school, the high school, and the middle school and passed out the literature about anti-idling and informed them about the negative effects of idling that it is in fact um, illegal to idle for more than three minutes in Connecticut and um, just kind of spread the word to members of the community about that. Right. Promoting clean energy options uh, to members of the community is really what we're looking for and we 
you know, we attend a lot of um, town events and the, the solar panels that are now on the roof of the high school is just one of the examples as to how far we've gotten and um, how our work has progressed, so. Kenny. First of all, I want to say we have a long 10-year, essentially, history with Project Green. It's been great. They worked on the cleanage option earlier. They helped with the HES campaign and with the Solarize campaign. And now, and we had a small grant from the New England Grassroots Environmental Fund, and we worked with the students to do this anti-idling uh, project. And that also included getting signs for the schools and also for the town. Right. Mm -hmm. exactly. So you want to talk some more about in more detail, like what you told us before about talking to the parents and all. Oh, so, yeah. So. so a few of the members um, actually would go up to the cars if people were. Um, so we went at the end of the day when parents would come to pick up their kids. And some, some weren't idling at all, so we didn't even really need to go into detail about the negative effects of idling because they were already aware. But So we just wanted to um, let them know that besides saving money and from gas by not idling, that you are helping people remain healthy because uh, the carbon dioxide emissions that are emitted from the cars like really um, bother people with asthma and they can increase risk for even cancer. And then we also um, obviously promote the idea that it helps climate change right. by um, keeping your car idling. And then um, we also, um, I think that was about it. But yes, we went around to the cars and let them know about the ne negative effects. And most of them um, weren't aware that it was illegal to uh, idle That's for three really minutes. very and, helpful. Yeah, the other thing, nice. in my job, I work with schools in terms of indoor air problems. And one of the reasons why we want parents and, and of course, the bus is not to idle because that gets into the school and becomes right. a problem, especially the kids with asthma. So it's very helpful what you did. So. <laughs> For us, George Ann and Kenny, it's really remarkable and nice to see that we have the youth of North Haven participating in this very important initiative that we have here in town. And I know that this is kind of your last year in the high school, right, Courtney and Kylie? Yeah. Both going off to college. <laughs> and uh, we hope that the leadership that you've demonstrated will continue to perpetuate itself with new members coming in. It's great to see, ladies and gentlemen, when the students of our high school work with us and have the same interests that we do in terms of increasing the town's energy efficiency and moving the town forward. Now we have a few moments left. I'd like to turn it back to George Ann and Kenny. Kenny, any closing comments in George Ann and some of the initiatives you'd like to see moving forward? Well, I would still encourage people to have a home energy audit. We don't have the free anymore, but um, as Mike or anybody probably on this panel can tell you, you will save money even if you have to pay a little bit more because they come in and they do a thorough um, evaluation and, and improvements. They actually do things to your house to save money and they give you products and it's I think you get about six or seven hundred dollars worth of labor and materials. I guess the other thing well, uh, we want, once you start doing um, so. We would like to yeah. encourage people in the town to join the Clean Energy Task Force and participate in some of these initiatives. It's really interesting. You learn a lot. You meet a lot of interesting people. And it's actually fun. We have a, a small task force, and we welcome anybody in North Haven to, to join us. Thank you. Definitely. I can add uh, something quickly. Sure, Tom, to go right ahead. Uh, since you mentioned that the free uh, <clears throat> energy audits have kind of gone away, uh, we do actually offer the free energy assessments. Our uh, site technicians are uh, BPI certified. It's not quite the equivalent of the full-blown energy audits uh, that's offered through the Connecticut Green Bank, but it is a good way to, to uh, place to start and learn about your uh, energy consumption and, and a place where you can um, start saving. So. As part of the solar. Through the solar eyes program, sure. Well, thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen, for watching today. I'd like to thank my guests here all of whom are re making remarkable contributions to our great town. And as we move forward, rest assured that the town of North Haven will continue to maintain its leadership position across the state of Connecticut in delivering new, exciting, and innovative technologies to ensure that we are doing everything we can to conserve energy and move the town forward in a very positive fashion. Thank you for joining us and thank you to all my guests.